you wake up in the morning, pick up your phone, and use Face ID to unlock it. No need to enter a passcode because your phone already knows what you look like. Sounds pretty normal, right? Well, it's not. This facial recognition technology might just be getting a little out of hand now. Facial recognition algorithms can identify and match faces with an accuracy rate of over 90%, and it's time we start thinking clearly about that. It's almost as if these algorithms have become the Sherlock Holmes of the digital world, capable of spotting and verifying our faces in the blink of an eye. It all sounds pretty impressive, until we start thinking about identity fraud and privacy invasion. What if you get arrested wrongfully because of facial recognition technology? Does the government have access to your camera 24-7? Join us as we take a closer look at the ethics of facial recognition technology and how it intertwines with our precious human rights. Grab your popcorn and sit back, it's going to be a fun ride. Before we dive right into it, we need to answer one big question. How does facial recognition technology work? We know you use Face ID every single day, but have you ever wondered how it works? Your phone can recognize you even when you're wearing glasses, gotten a haircut, changed your beard, and even when you're wearing a mask. How is it doing all that? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. Facial recognition technology uses a combination of hardware and software to capture, analyze, and compare facial patterns. It all starts with an image or video of a face. This could be a photo, a surveillance video, or even a live feed from a camera. Then, the software goes to work. It starts extracting your key facial features, like the distance between your eyes, the shape of your nose, the contours of your face, and even unique identifiers, like scars or birthmarks. All these features are quickly converted into mathematical representations called facial templates. But wait, it doesn't stop there. The technology then compares these facial templates against a database of known faces. You know how there's a photo of you on your driver's license, passport and social media profiles? Well, that's basically the database of known faces. The software simply looks for matches between the captured face and faces in the database. And voila! Facial recognition tech delivers its verdict, either confirming a match or indicating that the face doesn't match any known individuals. It's almost like playing a high-stakes game of find the needle in the haystack, except the technology does it at lightning speed. So, is any of this ethical? In the past few years, people have started questioning the accuracy of facial recognition systems and the role this new tech is playing in identity fraud. Law enforcement agencies have mistakenly implicated innocent people in riots. And the questionable storage method is giving privacy advocates nightmares. Considering all these controversies around facial recognition, we can't help but bring you the million dollar question. Is it time for facial recognition to get an ethical reckoning? Now, first off, let's consider the racial bias and discrimination. There's no denying that racial bias has become a major concern when it comes to facial recognition systems. While these algorithms claim to have an impressive accuracy rate of over 90%, it's still necessary to acknowledge that these results aren't universal. Lately, some troubling developments have raised serious ethical questions about the use of facial recognition technology. Take, for instance, the fact that over 117 million Americans, more than half of the adult population, have their photos in law enforcement's facial recognition network. What's truly disturbing is that these systems have shown a higher rate of errors when it comes to matching dark-skinned faces compared to their lighter-skinned counterparts. Back in July 2020, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, conducted research to investigate these concerns and found a huge racial bias towards women of color. In fact, even the best algorithms examined by NIST weren't able to accurately identify a person wearing a mask half the time. But wait, it gets worse. The United States federal government recently released a report confirming discrimination issues within its own facial recognition algorithms. Shockingly, the system worked relatively well for middle-aged white males, but performed poorly when it came to people of color, the elderly, women, and children. When you think about it, these results are very disheartening. They mean that these racially biased algorithms can lead to wrongful arrests, lengthy incarcerations for innocent people, 
and in the most tragic cases, even deadly police violence. We might think that the Face ID on our phone can easily detect changes in our appearance, but that's not entirely true. In fact, the truth is that even the most advanced tech can make some huge, life-threatening mistakes. Next up, we need to consider the huge breach of privacy. Everyone loves their privacy, right? You might think that you're living a private life away from social media, but that's far from the truth. In fact, what's even worse is that there's a huge lack of transparency about how facial recognition technology stores and manages information. Nobody should be made to feel like they're constantly under government surveillance, but that's exactly how most critics are feeling right now. Back in 2020, all these controversies led to the European Commission banning facial recognition technology in public spaces for up to five years. They plan to make changes to their legal framework and also include strict guidelines on privacy before they can go around storing our information. So, is it just about being under surveillance all the time? Of course not. It gets much worse. Most organizations keep all their facial data on local servers, and we know just how secure they are. Every few years, we keep hearing about major security breaches, so we don't really know how we should trust these organizations to keep our information private. I mean, if Microsoft, Apple, and Samsung's data centers could be hacked, then nobody's really safe out there. The only ethical solution to the problem would be to guarantee proper encryption. These companies would have to deploy special IT cybersecurity teams to ensure proper data storage. At the same time, we'd also appreciate it if they could tell us what information they're storing and how it's used. And that brings us to the next big problem, consent. A huge ethical issue with facial recognition is that most of these technologies are used without consent or notification. Even if an organization has access to surveillance cameras, video feeds, or the general public, it doesn't always mean it's a good idea to use that data without even informing people. And of course, identifying someone by their face also opens up a whole new avenue of accessing other data. Let's take a very simple example here. Let's say you use facial recognition to identify people who walk into your store. You'll get a fair idea of your target market and the kind of people who purchase your products. Now that you have that information, is it ethical for you to use that identity to pull purchasing history? What about a credit report? Will you stop serving people with a low credit score and only cater to those few high-value customers? Once we start going down that rabbit hole, the questions never really end. Okay, enough bad news. Thankfully, some security breaches have actually led to better cybersecurity. While there's nobody who likes security breaches that expose our information to hackers, there is still some good that comes out of it. Once we understand all the ways our data is vulnerable, we can end up advancing cybersecurity and increase the usage of cloud-based storage that's perfectly encrypted. One great example of this is how hackers broke Apple's iPhone Face ID user authentication in just 120 seconds at the annual Black Hat Hacker Conference. Don't worry, the conference was actually arranged by security researchers who wanted to improve their methods. Unfortunately, even these events increase the vulnerability of the stored data to hackers, but that's just for a limited period of time. Hopefully, the security researchers will be able to prevent Face ID theft in serious crimes in the future. And before we wrap up, let's talk about how facial recognition technology can be more ethical. Now that we've developed this brilliant piece of tech, there's no running from it. Instead of being afraid of it, there are actually several ways we can make it more ethical in the future. For instance, Anyone who uses facial recognition systems shouldn't use it for unethical reasons, like to determine an individual's skin color, race, religion, gender, or disability. Also, even though we know that a lot of companies use our facial data on a regular basis to give us access to better technology, they shouldn't share that information without the informed consent of individuals. In fact, citizens should also have the right to access, edit, and delete their facial information if they want to. Now, it might sound pretty unrealistic to say all that, but there are some companies who've already addressed the ethical issues of facial recognition systems. Just take Microsoft, for example. The company released training resources and new materials to help customers get more information about the ethical use of this technology. If that wasn't enough, 
then they're also working on improving the technology's ability to recognize faces across a variety of skin tones and ages. Here's to hoping that more companies will follow suit. Until then, watch out. The cameras are always watching. And that's a wrap for this video. Do you think facial recognition technology is unethical? How is it breaching your privacy? Let us know in the comment section below. Before you head out, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos like this. See you in the next one.